Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to try out Colt Express. This is a video game adaptation of the board game of the same name. It's a board game that I've never played, by the way, and I've never played the video game adaptation either. So this is going to be a first impressions video. With that being said, you can find it on Steam for about 10 bucks, should you want to pick it up for yourself. So let's go ahead and learn how to play. Uh, there's story mode, there's classic. You can view more games down here. This little button here, there's no tooltips, but if you click on this, this allows you to exit the program. This button here is more of like a social thing if you want to log in and play online. I didn't bother doing that. I'd rather learn how to play the game first before dealing with others online. This button here brings up your profile, achievements, unlockables, online stats, uh, different things like that. Not going to bother with that either. And then over here on the right hand side, you've got options uh, under the settings menu here. You've got like uh, music, sound effects, toggles, a slider, notifications, language, different things like that. I have the music off for the sake of the commentary and to prevent copyright issues. There's rules. So you can click on that and then you can scroll down and, and read about how the game is played. And there's different tabs that you can go through too. Ranking and Karma, for example. The different bandit types that you can be. Different things like that. According to the... Uh, the rules here. The goal of the game, to win you must become the richest bandit in the Old West. To reach this goal, you will try to get more loot than your opponents without being hit by too many bullets. The best shooter will receive the title of Gunslinger worth $1,000. So again, I've never played, so we'll see how that works in just a little bit. Alright, uh, let's go back here. There's also a tutorial. Let's go ahead and check that out. I don't know if it's interactive or not, but we'll, we'll go ahead and do it. Looks like it's interactive to me. Alright, to win you must collect more loot than other bandits. The game ends after five rounds. Each round is made up of two phases. Scheming, plan your moves by playing cards. Stealing, carry out the predetermined moves. For this tutorial, you'll be playing Tuco. I don't I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. The character with the red shirt. Oh, great. Red shirts. I guess I'll be shot first. You start in the, in the last card. That's a Star Trek reference for those of you that don't know that. These are your cards. You get six cards from your deck. Each card represents a specific action that you can program. Each round is a series of turns. Each turn is represented by a card icon. We start by playing a round with only one turn. Alright. The goal of the game is to get the most loot. Play a robbery card to grab some loot by dragging it from your hand to the center of the screen. Remember, this phase is only the planning. You don't perform the action now. Alright, so it looks like everyone's playing a card. With the scheme and phase complete, we now carry out the actions that have been previously programmed. The pile is flipped over, and the cards are drawn one at a time, following the same order in which they were played. You played a robbery card. Pick up the loot by clicking the corresponding action icon. Gems are worth 500. Purses are between 200 and 250 and 500. The strong box and the locomotive is worth 1,000. Pick up the gem. Okay. The Django played a move card. Inside a car, you can only move one car in either direction. On a roof, you can move up to three cars in either direction. Doc played a fire card. This card allows bandits to shoot each other in an adjacent car or anywhere on the roof. Characters block line of sight. Doc fires his gun and spends one of his six bullets. Who's he shooting? Oh no! I got shot. Doc's bullet card is added to your deck. For round two, we will play two turns. Each round, the next bandit in line becomes the first player. A marker is shown on the portrait of the first player of the round, in this case, the Django. Okay. Bad luck! You drew Doc's bullet card from last round. This is a dead card. 
So there's sort of like a deck building thing going on here too, if you're unlucky enough to get these bullet cards. Play a punch card. Play a fire card. Okay. Round two, stealing. Alright, so someone's punching somebody. Oh! What did that do? Alright, he's picking up. You played a punch card. Select Doc as your target. Now select the loot item to drop. Finally, choose the direction to push the bandit. Oh, okay, so punching someone steals their loot and then pushes them in a different direction. I see. Although I don't think I can take it right now. I have to pick it up later. Doc played a floor change card. This card makes the character change floors. In this case, from inside to roof. Okay. You played a fire card. Choose your target. Your target will receive a bullet card. For the next round, we'll go with three turns. We also added an event after the last turn. The marshal will drop a new strong box at his position at the end of the... Okay, so there's also a marshal in this train, too. There are many end-of-round events. Read the description to know what to expect. Alright, so he's moving. The blue one is moving, Doc. The marshal is next to an opponent. Play a marshal card. Someone's shooting. If you do not like action options, you can always draw three more cards. This counts as an action. Okay, well, my, my little picture here of me is hiding that, but if I click on that, I can draw three more cards. Okay. Play a fire card. If you are the bandit who shot the most bullets, you'll get a gunslinger bonus of 1,000. All right, so he's moving. When the marshal shares a car with a bandit, that bandit receives a neutral bullet card and is forced to flee onto the roof. Your turn to play. Oh, okay, I'm moving the sheriff over, I guess. Ah. Crazy. Oh, that's not good. You don't take any action because you drew three cards on this turn in the scheming phase. Alright. Your turn to play. Oh, I got another shot. Okay. This is the end of round event. The marshal drops a new strong box. Round four. Round four is special turns. Tunnel, speeding up, and switching. We'll explain them as they come up and play. Let's start by moving from here. All right. This turn takes a place in a tunnel. During this turn, all players play their actions face down. Ah. This complicates strategy, I can see that. Play a fire card. This is the speeding up turn. During this turn, all players play two actions in a row. Play a four, cha four change, all right? And then a punch. Wow, this is quite strategic. You've got to pay attention to what your opponents are putting down here. This is a switching turn. In this turn, the playing order is reversed. Oh, jeez. Play a robbery card. This is going to take some getting used to. Let's go on the roof over the Django. We'll have a nice surprise for him. All right.
Tuco can shoot through roofs. It is a special ability as indicated by the small icon next to the action button. All characters have a special ability. Uh, okay. Oh. Alright, climb down. And punch. Punch Doc. Make him drop the precious strong box. Send him toward the marshal. Oh my. It's a double whammy. Oh. Strategy. As you saw with J J Django punching the air and Doc climbing on the marshal, planning is difficult and can lead to chaotic and undesirable but still fun situations. I, that's what I just said. I mean, this is crazy chaos. Especially toward the later stages here. Pick up the strong box. Alright. Round 5 is the last round of the game. The tutorial is done. You can exit to the main menu or finish this game on your own so you can hone your skills. Alright, first one is normal, second one is normal, third card is face down, fourth one is normal. And what's this? Hostage taking of the conductor. Each bandit who is either in the locomotive or in its roof receives $250 ransom. Huh. So I want to be on the roof on my last turn, I guess. Alright, well... Alright, so what did he play? Uh, can I see that? Oh, I can see, okay. So... Let's see, the Django move is moving the Sheriff. And... That means if he's moving him to the right, then I'm gonna be on the roof. I'm gonna be in trouble. Doc is moving left or right. So that means I should probably take a gun action and hit Doc with something. Alright, so he's moving probably this way. Doc's on the roof, so that means he's going to climb down after I shoot him. I'm going to be up here. So... I don't know where Doc is going to be. What's this one do? That's for, that's for taking money. Um, I'm going to be here. All right. See, Doc's climbing down, and he's climbing up. This is tough. I'll go ahead and move the sheriff. If Doc climbs down into a, a section, I can move him into Doc's space. Alright, now they're playing face down. I have no choice but to... Alright. Um, I'm still on the roof. So I guess I'll just play a move card. I want to be on the roof on my last turn. Alright, he's going to take something. He's... I, I don't know what he's going to do. Alright, I'm just going to play this one. It's not going to do anything. But I'll still be on the roof. Assuming that he moves... Oh no, he moved the sheriff over... That completely ruined my plans. I thought he'd move the sheriff toward me. Well, that's alright, I can still shoot this guy over here. Alright, so now he's moving. My turn. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna move him over. So it, that sort of worked in my favor. I right, know these were face down. He's gonna punch me. Probably into the sheriff. Oh, that sucks. Oh, I lost my. Oh, I lost that. 
Well, I'm still on the roof. My turn to play. I guess I'll move over. I guess I'll move over here. Alright, yeah, he grabbed that. My turn to play. Yeah, I have nothing to pick up. Hostage taking of the conductor. Good game. So I got 250 bucks from that. So who won the game? Uh, yeah. Oh! I got the gunslinger bonus. That's right. Okay. I shot the most. Interesting. Okay. Create an Asmodee account to play online and gain access to some awesome and exclusive unlockables. I'll do that later. Okay, so yeah, again, there's story mode and there's classic. I just want to quickly see if there's a way to set this up. Quick play or custom game. There's online and local. In custom game, you can set the number of, I guess, the number of players. Three players, four players, five players, or six players. Options, random character select. You can do variants. But it looks like in order to do variants, you have to finish uh, parts of the story in story mode before you can unlock these variants. So that's something to keep in the back of your mind. Again, quick play as well. I want to see what story mode's about before we head on out. Play a story. Explore a story about a character by playing through five chapters. Complete a whole story to unlock a game variant to using classic game. Discover the past of each character by reading the comics. A new page is unlocked each time you complete a chapter. Alright, so there's all these different people, and I'm assuming each one has their own abilities. It's really cool. Alright. So there you go, folks. A very uh, first brief look at Colt Express. Um, in the next video, we'll try playing either the story mode or classic and, and see how well we do. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.